Hey there, this is Steve Horseman with Good Guys to Great Men. Thanks for watching today. We're in the four week series of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. The first two weeks, if you haven't watched, you can go back and watch what I talked about with respect to criticism and defensiveness. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse are from the John Gottman Institute, which are criticism, defensiveness, stonewalling, and contempt. Today is week three. Today is week three. This week is week three. And I'm talking about stonewalling today. I want to talk about this, this one horseman, this one bad thing that men and women do in relationship that creates a high likelihood of divorce. So what is stonewalling? Stonewalling is, st stonewalling is the act of withdrawing from interaction. It's the act of shutting down or closing yourself off from the other person. This can be done many different ways. But when, what stonewalling is not, when, when st some people will call this stonewalling, if, you, if you're setting a boundary, if, if something happens that is absolutely unacceptable, it could be something really toxic and mean, it could be physical violence, which happens from women to men, more often than we like to admit. If you're gonna set a boundary in physical violence, you're gonna to have to stand firmly and make sure that you prevent it, that you make sure she knows it's unacceptable. And if you need to leave the room, that is not stonewalling when you're setting a boundary. Uh, if, so, if there's verbal abuse, toxic verbal abuse going on, and you, and you say calmly, if this continues, I'm going to re remove myself from this conversation until we both calm down, and then we can come back together. So I'll check in with you in an hour, but I'm leaving this conversation now. That is not stonewalling. Stonewalling is more nuanced. It's more insidious. It's more manipulative and controlling, actually, where you do things like maneuvering away, subtly you'll avoid contact you'll have evasive moves like uh, verbally saying okay well i don't see what the big deal is or you'll act busy or you'll be obsessively um, involved in something like your phone or pretending you're doing something to uh, ignore or avoid her stonewalling is the deliberate attempt to withdraw from interaction in order to control the situation stonewalling does not work how does it poison the relationship Again, it erodes trust and connection and attraction. It erodes respect. As soon as uh, either one of you knew that you know that you get into a conversation and that the, the likelihood is gonna be silence, that there will be no communication, no interaction, no cooperation. When you know that, it erodes all sense of trust. That foundation of a relationship, which is communication and trust and respect, is gone every time you snowwall, uh, stonewall. It breeds hopelessness. Stonewalling, whenever you know that you get into a conversation or any type of conflict or problem solving that, that you or she's going to go quiet, what happens is that you begin to believe that this will never work. This is hopeless. You start to resent them and it starts to build the next horseman of the apocalypse, which is called contempt, which I'll get to next week. Whenever you continually face stonewalling or she, she faces it in you, contempt comes in and this is this boiling, boiling energy of hatred and, and bitterness that comes up. How do you change stonewalling? When stonewalling is coming from you, when you're doing it, when you know you're the one who's quietly maneuvering away, going to the garage, avoiding her, and just, just giving the silent treatment, you have to know that the stronger man will stand firmly on both feet and stay present. Remain present and calm and confident. I always say, Use curiosity, use amusement. Stop believing that what's happening is going to hurt you. Stop thinking that the best relief of the pressure you're feeling is to run away from it, to avoid it, because that's more fearful, that's more fear causing than you standing there with her. Women will say that they feel more fearful when he runs away and can't stand with her even in conflict. So stonewalling will avoid trust and confidence again. So what if she's uh, stonewalling? I wanted to say, what if she is stonewalling and you're the one pursuing her? Now, a lot of times women will do that, the silent treatment. It's legendary, right? That you've been locked out. She goes and locks the bedroom door and tells you to sleep on the couch. That's stonewalling. Now, first of all, you can call it out. Make sure you understand these terms so you let her know that what you're doing right now is not acceptable. And if you've been doing your work, you'll be able to say that I don't treat you like that and I don't want to be treated like this. So you call it out. Make sure she knows you know what's going on. But you also need to re release the pressure. When, when she is stonewalling, it means she's feeling pressure and she's flying away from it. The worst thing you can do with women or horses, as I say, is continue adding pressure when they're already fleeing from pressure. That just doesn't make sense. You have to back away. You have to wait for the clouds to clear and the pressure to reduce before you come back together. 
and then hopefully have a conversation where you can talk about this stonewalling not being acceptable and how it doesn't help anything and make sure that you're avoiding the first two horsemen which were criticism and defensiveness when you re-engage. So I hope that helps you understand what stonewalling is a little bit better and you now know a little bit more about what to think about it and what to do about it when it happens. Next week we're going to talk about the fourth and worst horseman of the apocalypse and that is called contempt. Thanks again for watching today. Have a great one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.